all over the world, petrified trees are found standing up, connecting these different rock layers. Petrified trees standing up. Now, how long does a dead tree stand up around here before it falls down? Hmm, five years, maybe ten years? Five million? Oh, no, not five million, that's for sure, right? But yet petrified trees in the vertical position are found all over the planet. I'll just flash through some pictures real quick here. There are all kinds of petrified trees found standing up. And they're running through multiple layers, and the kids are being taught the layers are different ages, and yet here's one tree connecting them all. I'm having a hard time believing these layers are different ages. That's what I'm having. Central Alabama's got a large coal mine with a whole bunch of petrified trees standing up running through two seams of coal, the Blue Creek and the Mary Lee. Now, they're going to tell you in school, for coal to form, a forest has to grow, and then it all falls over and turns into a swamp, and then it gets buried, and then new mud washes in on top, and the coal slowly, or coal slowly forms from the forest that was buried. And then thousands of years later, another forest grows on top, and a whole new layer of coal form. So if you find two layers of coal, oh, that took thousands of years. That's what they'll tell you in school. That's simply baloney. We'll cover more on coal formation on video six, but if you look at the samples of trees found in this coal mine, you look at sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I mean, any freshman law student could tell you, hey folks, I think I can prove these two coal formations formed at the same time, very quickly. Within a few weeks or months of each other, that's for sure. Probably during the flood in the days of Noah. We'll cover more on that on video six. In Cookville, Tennessee, how far is Cookville from here? 100 miles? What's that? 150 miles. In Cookville, Tennessee, there's a coal mine with petrified trees standing, running. Here's coal at the bottom. The tree is coalified at the bottom, petrified in the middle, and coalified on top, where it went through a second coal seam. Same tree. By the way, why are coal seams generally found on top of layers of rock or clay? Wouldn't it uh, be a pretty poor place to grow a forest? Ought to be on top of soil, don't you think? Yeah. Polystrate fossils are found all over the world. In uh, no Joggins, Nova Scotia, there are dozens of petrified trees standing up, connecting different rock layers. People, scientists go up there and look at them and just say, wow, that's, that's curious. <laughs> no, it's more than curious. It's devastating to your teaching that the layers are different ages. There's a brochure you can get from our uh, bookstore. It's $2. It's got 30-some pictures of color pictures of petrified trees in the vertical position. Occasionally, the petrified trees are found upside down running through many rock layers. Now we really got a problem. I've thought about this till my brain hurts. The evolutionists have two ways to solve this. They can say, well, Hoven, you know, the trees stood upright for millions of years while the layers formed around them. Or the trees grew through hundreds of feet of solid rock looking for sunlight. Uh, there's a third way to look at it. You know, maybe they were all buried in a big flood. Mm -hmm. How fast was that calf going? Keep that thought in mind, okay? Mount St. Helens blew thousands of trees into Spirit Lake. Lots of those trees are stuck in the mud at the bottom of Spirit Lake. They're going to petrify in the standing position. More on video six about that. It doesn't take long for things to petrify. Here's petrified firewood. The guy chopped on it before it turned to stone. Here's mummified dog stuck in a tree. Turned to stone. They chased a coon up the tree apparently and got stuck. They named it Stucky. What would you call it? Okay. Here's petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's leg still in it. The boot was made in 1950 and the leg is turned to stone. Here's petrified fish giving birth. It does not take millions of years to give birth. Praise God, okay? Here's a petrified hat. Petrified pickle found in a jar. The guy sent me the jar and pickle. He said, Brother Hovind, I found this in Montana in an old home. The house was you know, junk, the roof was gone, the house was falling apart. But he said, you want a petrified pickle for your museum? I said, of course, who in their right mind would not want a petrified pickle, you know? <laughs> Come on down to Pensacola and Dinosaur Adventure Land and see the petrified pickle. Here's petrified sacks of flour found in a uh, flour mill that flooded in 1910 in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Here's petrified toadstool. There's an amazing gem and mineral museum just south of Bloomington, Illinois, in the little bitty tiny town called Shirley, Illinois. You've got to be trying to find it to get there, but it's worth going to see the funk gem and... Uh, Mineral Museum, okay? Here's petrified acorns. This kid sent them to me. He said, Brother Hovind, I was, I was seven years old at the time. He said, I stuck these acorns in a bucket of water and I thought they might, you know, sprout and make some trees and I forgot about them. Next spring, my mama found the bucket on the back porch and the acorns had turned to stone. He said, would you like them for your museum? I said, of course. I come on down and see the petrified acorns. More on petrification on video number uh, six. 
So kids, when they tell you the layers are different ages, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're confused or they're lying. It is not correct. Those layers all form, nearly all of them, at the time of Noah's flood. 80 to 85 percent of Earth's surface does not even have three geologic periods appearing in correct consecutive order. Even though this geologic column does not exist, except in the textbooks, that teaching is what changed people in the 1830s away from believing the Bible to believing in uniformitarianism.